Praise God. All right. <clears throat> if you guys have your Bible and you'd like to turn, uh, I'll be going to several books in the Bible, but we will start with the book of Hebrews. Um, and then we will be going to the book of Genesis. In Hebrews chapter 12 is where we will begin. Okay. I need to have you a little bit back beside me. There we go. That'll work. And uh, we're actually recording this for YouTube, so people will get to learn about you guys and would like to get a photograph of all you together. This way that people will know that there are believers around the, in Slovakia all over the world. Amen. And uh, um, but at, at any rate, the <clears throat> one of the things that the Lord has helped me to understand, Jack William, to help me to understand. is how to help the Jewish people recognize that Yeshua is the Messiah or Jesus is Messiah. A great blessing for you. I'll go shorter so it's easier for you to translate. Is that in order for the Jews to recognize the Messiah? Say the sentence, it's easier for me. Whole sentence. That is a whole sentence. Mm -hmm. Okay. He has also revealed to me who the Catholic Church really is. Historically speaking, there, there has been a great conflict between Israel and the Catholic Church. And I'm going to share with you where that battle began and where it will end. Some people may not realize that the things that are happening today are from an, an age-old battle that goes all the way back to the book of Genesis. And you will understand thoroughly how the story of the Catholic Church started in Genesis and how it will end in Revelation. Story, príbeh katolíckej církvi začal v Genesis a ako skončí až celkom v knihe Zjavenia. Rome had a different name. Rím uh, mal iné meno 4,000 years ago. Pred 4,000 rokmi. Their name has only changed to Rome in this day or the Catholic Church when I say Rome. Katolická církva, to meno katolická, to sa len zmenilo neskôr. Tá meno, ich meno, oni sa volali ináč. But keeping this in mind, we must remember 
that God still has many of his children that are in this Catholic system that he wants to bring out. Ale musíme si pamätať, ako o tom rozprávame. Musíme tak isto pamätať, že Boh, Pán Boh má strašne veľa svojich ľudí v katolíckej církvi, ktorých On musí ešte vybrať von. Amen. So let's start in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12. Židom, 12. kapitola. In verse 16 and 17. Verse 16 and 17. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For you know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance though he sought it carefully with tears. Aby nebol niekto smilník alebo obecný a čiže svetak ako Ezra, mm-hmm. ktorý za jeden pokem predal svoje prorodenstvo. Lebo viete, že keď potom chcel zdediť požehnanie, bol odvrhnutý, lebo nenašiel miesta obrátený u svojho otca. Hoci to aj so slzami snažne hrada. Tu u svojho otca tam je, tu je kurzivé či nie tam. Mm-hmm. Jakoba, hej? Amen. How many of you guys are aware that many places in the Bible it speaks about God loved Jacob, but he hated Esau? Okay, you guys are aware of this, yes? Okay. Yes, exactly. In Romans, also in the book of Malachi. The odd thing is, It is a prophetic scripture. Ironia toho je, že to je proste prorocké, prorocký verš. It is uh, a hatred that God had for Esau, not so much Esau what, that was born as Jacob's brother, but his children that would come after him. Boh ako už vedel, že nenávidel Izáva, ale nie tak ako, že toho chlapca Izáva, ako jeho potomkov, ktorí prídu, lebo vedel, že čo budú robiť, mm-hmm. kto to bude za národ. God being all knowing, he knew what Esau's children would do in the future. Boh bol, je vševedúci, ano, on vie všetko dopredu a on vedel, ako sa tá história vyvinie v budúcnosti so Izáovami potomkami. Even though Esau hated his brother Jacob, he hated Jacob because he stole his birthright. Okay. He wanted to kill Jacob for stealing it. But the odd thing is, is we find that when Jacob returns home, he never tries to kill Jacob at this time. Ale čo je tu ironia, je, že keď sa Jakob vrátil domov, tak vtedy Ezau ho nechcel zabiť. No, tak sa v tej chvíli, tak sa ho neusiluje zabiť. Hej, v tej chvíli sa ho neusiluje zabiť. OK, and so... What's interesting, and now we will turn to Genesis, because we're going to break down what's written here. In chapter 32, just to remind you about the story of Jacob and Esau, We know that the two boys were born as twins. What we would call fraternal twins, they were not identical. And we know this because Esau was a hairy man and he was red and Jacob was not. Okay, so 
Yes. And but when it come to the blessing of his father Isaac, his mother knew that Jacob should get the blessing. Matka Izaka a Ezawa, hej, ona vedela, že to požehnanie má ísť na Jakoba, nie na Ezawa. Podľa izraelského, podľa izraelského zákonu, to bol prvorodený syn, ktorý to má dostať, áno, ale matka vedela, že to by mal byť Jakob a nie, nie Ezawa. And once she was able to convince Jacob to pretend that he was actually Esau, in order to be blessed of his father before he died. A potom presvedčila, hej, ona bola tá, čo presvedčila Jakoba, že on to musí urobiť a musí oklamať Ezaua uh, a ísť pre to požehnanie k otcovi, hej. Once he, once he actually pretended this and, and Isaac actually give him the blessing Izak dali Jakovovi to požehnanie na miesto Ezaua. It could not be changed. Už sa to nemohlo zmeniť. On to už nemohol, oh, urobil sme chybu. Nie, nie. Už sa to, to už bolo ako nezmenné. God honored Isaac's word as if it was the words of God. Pán Boh proste honored. Poctil jeho slovo. Poctil uh, požehnanie, ktoré Izak dal na Jakoba ako, ako konečné. And so when Esau came and discovered that Jacob had robbed him of his blessing. He begged his father to give him a blessing, at least one more blessing. And he does bless him. A on ho požehnal. But he never gets the same blessing that Ale Jacob would get. Ale nikdy nedostal to prvé požehnanie, ktoré dostal Jakob. So it developed a hatred. Esau wanted to kill him as a result. Takže tam sa stala tá nenávisť. Tá prvá pôvodná nenávisť, keď Ezau začal nenávidieť svojho brata kvôli tomu Jakoba. And as a result, Jacob had to flee He had to leave, leave his family and go into exile. A kvôli tomu, tej nenávisti, musel Jakob odísť. Musel nechať svoju rodinu a musel utekať do vyhnanstva. The same thing happened when Jesus was on the earth and Israel was there. Rome was in control of Israel at this time. Ježiš bol na zemi a bol v Jeruzaleme v Izraeli, tak Rímania, rímska vláda mala kat kontrolu, alebo on mal kontrolu nad mala kontrolu nad Izraelom, hej? Rímska vláda tam vládla. And again, Israel had to go into exile. A Izrael musel odísť do vyhnanstva. We always find that wherever Esau is, he, his children after him had a hatred towards the Jews. Stále zistíme, že kdekoľvek je Esau, Esau, alebo potomci, či už fyzicky, alebo duchovný, lebo on má aj fyzicky aj duchovných potomkov. Tak kde je Esau, tak tam Izrael nemôže byť s ním. Stále musí odísť. In, in the Bible, when Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt, In order to get to the promised land, Esau and his children, his descendants, no longer Esau himself, was there to stop the Jews from entering into the promised land. Keď uh, Mojžiš vyviedol národ Izraela, uh, aby sa dostali do promyslen, no to zasľúbenej, zeme. zasľúbenej zeme, tak v tej zasľúbenej zemi boli potomci Ezala a oni už nedovolili, aby sa tam židia vôbec dostali. They were there to, to be a hindrance unto the children of Israel. You see, this is what Esau's children always have done with Israel, was to hinder them from receiving the blessings of God. Čiže z toho vlastne môžeme vidieť, že to, čo vlastne robili tí synovia Ezava, boli práve to, že prišli a bránili vlastne 
bránili vlastne silom Izraela vlastne, aby vstúpili do toho, do, do, do svojej zasúdnej zemi alebo do svojich výstva. The same thing we see when Rome was in control of Israel and Jesus the Messiah comes. Rome was there to hinder them from recognizing their Messiah. Že to isté bolo za času, keď Ježiš bol na zemi, tak Rímania mali kontrolu nad tou zemou a oni boli ako tá prekážka tiež pre tých Židov, aby spoznali Mesiáša. Now, before I read you the story in Genesis, let's first prove this by the Bible in the book of Obadiah. Môj predtým, než prečítame teda Genesis, tak choďme do Obadaja, Oba, Obadiaš, malého, to je malý prvom, Obadiaš. There may be a question is how do we know that modern or the, the Romans of Jesus time were actually the descendants of Esau. Niekto má možno otázku, otázku ale ako to, že e, Rímania sú potomci Ezaua, je to tak? Oni sú potomci Ezaua, Rímania? But it's written in the Bible. Ale, ale to sa píše v Biblii, že sú. Mm. Even historically, we are able to trace this. Vieme to aj z historie, z faktuálnej historie, od historických ľudí. In the book of Kings, 1 Kings chapter 18. V knihe kráľov, prvej kráľov, kapitola 18. And you can, we'll go to it later, but just so you know. God had told David to kill or excuse me, David was there to kill all of Esau's descendants. David dostal príkaz zabiť všetkých potomkov Ezaua od Boha. And the Bible recorded that he'd killed every male child that was a descendant of Esau. A Biblia hovorí, že zabil každého muža, aj dieťa, aj ženu, aj woman too, right? He killed everybody. Well, no, he was only killing the men. Only men? Only the men. And children? And the, all the males. Children oh, and all. Okay. Males, Iba children. Mužov, mužov a mužské dieťa, ako chlapca. Mm-hmm. One child escaped. Jeden chlapec sa zachránil who was of, the Bible says, was of the royal house of Esau. Ktorý bol, podľa Biblie, zo z kráľovského rodu, rodu Ezaua. Ten okay. sa zachránil, ten nebol zabitý. He was a direct descendant of Esau. On bol priamý potomok z Ezaua. His name was Hadad. Jeho meno sa volalo Hadad. And Hadad, the Bible says, escaped David's sword and his servants who also were children of Esau. And he went to Egypt and was raised in the house of Pharaoh. Just like Moses. But there was a difference between him and Moses. Ale tam bol rozdiel medzi ním a Mojžišom. Moses, when he recognizes that he is a child of God, keď Mo- Mojžiš spoznal, že on je a, m, dieťa Boha, he takes his place with the children of Israel. On sa sám rozhodol si zobrať miesto medzi Izraelčanmi. And he suffered the afflictions that they suffered. A, a trpel s nimi ich... A, just as his forefather Jacob suffered as well. See? And Hadad, like Moses, was also raised in the house of Pharaoh. And when he became a man, he wanted to leave Pharaoh and he went to Syria. Tak chcel odísť od faraóna, ten Hadan, o ňom rozpráva, a odišiel do uh, krajiny, ktorá sa volá Sýria. And he became the king of Syria. A stal sa kráľom Sýrie. And so the descendants of Esau once again were gaining power in the Middle East. Takže potomkovia Ezaua, podľa histórie, znova za- začínali sa uh, na dobudať moc v Middle East na strednom východe. And as he gained that power, then his descendants moved into Rome. A potom potomci toho Hadada a jak mali tu moc v Sýrii, tak oni išli do Ríma, Itálie, dnešná mapa Itálie. 
Áno, tak oni sa tam proste presťahovali. Takže aj historicky potomci Ezawa sú z Ríma. And this is the part of them going from Syria to Rome is recorded in Jewish history. In the ancient Jewish writings we have this recorded. A v historických písmach židov myslím, že to je ako svetská židovská história zaznamenaná, tak zo Sýrie, tam je to zaznamená, že ako zo Sýrie potomci Ezao prešli na územie Talianska. As well as Northern Africa. A takisto aj do Severnej Afriky. This is why today we see that Rome has a great connection with the Arabic peoples of the Middle East. Because they are brothers. They are also brothers to Israel. But they hate the Jews. And the reason they hate the Jews is because God had promised that Jacob would be blessed. So to prove where we're speaking of here, let's take and look at the book of Obadiah and we will begin with uh, verse 6. It is only a book with one chapter. But it has a lot in this. He says, how are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? Okay, it's important that we see this because... Esau has hidden things that need to be sought up. Okay. And we'll take this verse by verse so we can understand this better. It says in verse 7, All the men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee. They that eat thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. Až k pomedziu ťa vyprevadia všetci tí mužovia, s ktorými máš smluvu. Povedu ťa, zmocne sa ťa mužovia, s ktorými máš pokoj. Tí, ktorí jedia tvoj chlieb, nadstavia ti páscu. Nebude proti tomu rozumu. I'm going to continue to read down to about verse 10 and have you read that and then we'll start breaking down again. Ja prečítam, prečítajú 10. veršu a potom to ide rozobrať. Shall I not in that day, saith the Lord, even destroy the wise men out of Adam and understanding out of the mount of Esau And thy mighty men, O Timon, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. And for, excuse me, for thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. Či nebude toho dňa tak, hovorí hospodin, že vyhubí múdrých z Edoma a rozumnosť z vrchu Ezavolho, a tvoji odratní sa budú desiť témane aby bol vyťatý človek z vrchu Ezavoho pre vraždu, pre ukrutnosť, ktorú si páchal na svojom bratovi Jakobovi, pokryť a hamba a budeš vyťatý na väčšnosť. Now we know in verse 10 this has not been fulfilled as of yet because as I said earlier Esau never did anything to Jacob. Hovoríme, že ten verš 10 sa ešte nesplnil zatiaľ, lebo vtedy... Esau a Jacob, Esau ho nezavil, Esau nič mu neurobil ešte. Ho nenávidel, ale ešte sa nič nestalo, hej? OK. So, therefore, it must apply to a future point. Takže tá, ten desiatý verš je proroctvo na budúcnosť, na dnešnú dobu, čo sa vlastne stane. Not future in our time, but future in the time of gen- the, re- the record in Genesis. 
v budúcnosti prorok it's, it's not future in the time we're living in now, but it is future from the time that we have the record of Esau and Jacob in Genesis. Čiže nie je to budúcnosť, ktorá sa stiahuje na dni, na dni ktoré, ktoré žijeme teraz, ale budúcnosť toho pohľadu, z ktorého vychádza kniha Genesis. No, z ktorého vychádza... Alebo, uh, vychádza z Genesis ako od, od bodu a počuje z budúcnosť od toho chvíľa. Áno, že od Ezala a Jakoba tu sa zapisuje uh-huh. budúcnosť. Well, you know what? what as I explain it, it'll, it'll, it'll make more sense okay. as I go. Okay, so don't worry about it now. It's okay. Okay, um... So he says that in verse 8 shall I not in that day saith the Lord even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the mount of Esau. Prečítaj ešte raz 8. verš. Či, či nebude toho dňa tak hovorí Hospodin, že vyhubí mudrých z Edoma a rozumnosť z vrchu Ezabovho. Which we'll get to in a second. Okay. Verse 11. In the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces, and foreigners entered into the gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou wast as one of them. Now, Obadiah the prophet is placing the descendants of Esau at the time that Jerusalem in 70 AD were overtaken. At the time that Titus the general came in and destroyed <coughs> Jerusalem. <coughs> okay. Titus was a Roman general and he joined forces with the Syrians in order to destroy Jerusalem and to send the children of Israel into exile. Titus bol ten, ktorý bol poslaný, ktorý mal zničiť uh, celý yeah, Jeruzalem. Yeah. A dať Židov do výhnanstva. Do výhnanstva. A zároveň on sa spojil vlastne so, so Syriou. Vlastne to tiež bol ten. Sa spojil so Syriou. In verse 8, when he says here that he would destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the Mount of Esau, he was speaking that even the Romans themselves would not recognize that Jesus was Messiah either because it was the Romans who literally hung him on the cross. Že v tom osmom verši tam taktiež hovoril, že ani Rímania nespoznajú, že on je, že on bol Ježiš. Ani oni nevedeli, že on je Mesiáš, lebo oni ho proste zabili, dali ho zabiť. The Jews, they didn't recognize their Messiah either. But Esau should have recognized them, but he didn't, he didn't either. Okay, and verse 12 says, But thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he became a stranger, neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction, neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. Again, Obadiah clearly shows who Esau is because it was the Romans that rejoiced as they brought the, uh, the, the temple treasures back to Rome. Čiže vlastne aj v tomto verši vlastne pokazuje Obadiáš, ako dokazuje Obadiáš vlastne ako um, má to zjednotenie vlastne Ezava s Rímanmi, alebo tú, tú jednotu, ktorá tam existuje. A totiž to, totiž to, lebo to boli práve Rímania, ktorí sa radovali, keď uh, poklady chrámu boli privedené, boli uvedené do Ríma. Even in Italy today there is what they call the Ark of Titus. 
it, is, it was erected as a memorial for the great work that the Roman general did, Titus, by destroying Israel, taking captive the Jews, killing as many as they could, and bringing back the menorah. It was the menorah that they brought back. Archa, jak Archa. Archa, v taliansku Archa Titusa, ako memorial, ako pamätník, že čo Titus urobil, v Jeruzaleme, ako zničili tam všetko. And so we can see clearly in Obadiah that God is identifying Esau with the Romans. Takže vidíme, že in verse 13 he says, Thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people, which would be Israel, in the day of their calamity, Yea, thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. Yes, 